Uh, he joins us now. Aaron, what's going on, man? Michael and Don here. Hey, guys. How you doing? Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Who do you like <laughs> this year? Who's, who's going to be your World Series winner, Aaron? My World Series, I think I went Dodgers over Rays. Kind of chalky. Well, the Rays aren't that chalky. No? I, li- I, I like the Rays. I, I think... Uh... I think they're the best. You know, I think what what we've seen the last couple of years and, and this year and I think going forward now is, you know, I think you can start to make the case for about 20 different teams that if this happens, this happens, then they're going to be really good. I think the Yankees fall into that. Um, and I think there's a number of teams where you where I can envision writing the script that, okay, it works out and they're a postseason team. And then obviously when that happens, um, anything possible. Uh, my sleeper is, I think the Padres have a chance to be really good. Um, I think they're going to pitch at a really high level, and um, I think they'll be a team that surprises people. Yeah, I like them too. That's a tough division, but I do think that San Diego can surprise some people. Well, let's go back to the American League East, and you have Tampa coming out of it. Any other playoff teams coming out of that division? I went with Boston, and, and um, you know, similar to last year, you know, I, I view this division, you know, with the exception of Toronto feeling like they've taken a step back, you could really make a case for all four of them. Um, you know, I think it's going to be a closely contested. I think I think four of the five teams could be, um, you know, north of 80 wins. Um, and I don't necessarily think anyone will run away with it. And, again, like like we can make the case for a lot of teams, I think you can do that in the American League East. You know, you mentioned that the Dodgers are, are in your World Series, uh, too, with the, with the Rays. Is there any concern about Mattingly having to manage all of those egos? They seem like such a disparate bunch of egos, and he has to, he has to manage one each differently. He kind of made a kind of a snotty, unmattingly-like comment about Yasiel Puig early. Do you think that could be a problem? Well, I, I think that is potentially one of their Achilles heels. Um, but I don't think there's any denying the talent they have in the starting rotation, assuming Kershaw's back issue is not something that lingers um what they're going to run out there every single night on the mound the potential they have up and down the lineup um on paper i I think they're the best team period but that being said those issues can creep up and those some of their star players some of their star hitters have had a recent history of of being injured or or not being able to post all the time so that becomes a concern when you're talking about the dodgers is anybody going to be able to challenge the Washington Nationals in the National League East? You know, I don't think so. Now with the with with what happened to Atlanta um, in their rotation, all those guys going down, I think they were a real I, – I think you could have made the case that they were the best team in the East, especially, you know, as their young talent kind of continues to blossom. You know, they made a lot of – noise in re- re-upping some of their younger star players. Um, but w- with the injuries they sustained in their rotation, it's hard to envision them being able to overcome that, uh, especially when you consider w- what Washington's running out there. And I think I-, I think they'll learn their lesson from last year, you know, perhaps getting a little ahead of themselves, thinking, you know, you can't just throw your gloves out there and expect uh, it's going to happen. So I think last year was a learning experience for what it should be a very talented and I think the class of the National League East. Aaron Boone is our guest here on the Michael K Show. Aaron, one of the big sources of conversation here in New York is that Sandy Alderson has come out and said that, you know, the Mets goal is to win, you know, ninety games. My goal is to be a billionaire. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> He's close though, Aaron. Very close. <laughs> Do you believe the Mets could win uh, ninety games? No. Uh, <laughs> no, absolutely not. Now I I think they are a team on the up and up, on the come, obviously with the kind of pitching they're starting to develop that's started to come to the forefront that's close and knocking on the door at the big league level and you know assuming everything goes with harvey well and he's back to being matt harvey next year that you could see next year being a huge year for them but no hard for me to imagine them being you know much over that 75 to 80 win kind of total Aaron, replay seemed to go over very well so far early in the season. The only bone of contention for people is what happened in Oakland between the A's and the Indians. There was a play at the plate. Jaso seemed like he blocked the plate without the ball. Upon further review, he did seem like he gave about six inches more to the plate than you saw by the naked eye. But it's still an umpire reviewing and then his judgment call 
on whether he blocked the plate properly. Do you think this is going to be a major issue throughout the season? I think I think the plate blocking is the only thing that's going to be an issue because the rule seems to be so vague and so mm-hmm. gray. And if you ask catchers, you ask players, I think you get a different answer all the time as to what exactly the rule is. As for the replay in itself, take out the collisions at the plate. I, I was blown away by how well it worked yesterday. I went in a little bit skeptical. I thought it was the right thing to do to try and get these calls right. We had the Pittsburgh game yesterday where there were two challenges. It went really smooth. It went really quick. I think you're going to eliminate not all, but a lot of the, uh, you know, manager, umpire, extended arguments. Um, he, you're, the new age is going to be the slow walk out, the turn your back, look to the dugout. So that takes some getting used to. But the fact that the umpires are all in on it and that they are – immediately before the umpire gets over the headset in theory and it looks like they are their eyes are already on those plays and they in more often most cases i think will have a decision by the time the crew chief gets over there and puts the headset on so i think it has a chance to be really successful and i think you're you're not going to hold up the game too much or or it's not going to be a big stall thing and in the end you're going to get a lot of calls correct that 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 otherwise would be. 